So um, it's wonderfully focusing to have 10 minutes to present. But now I have 15, so I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> All this extra time. Um, I'll try to finish in 10. So um, I had a great start to the day because uh, Richard said that, you know, the Juniper platforms and Junos is fully automated. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but that was great. Um, so I should just get off the stage now. Um, no, it's, it's, um, what I'm going to talk about is actually beyond automation. So I'm going to throw these buzzwords at you. One of them is SDN, but I have my own um, sort of um, meaning of SDN. Does this work? Yeah. Um, Self-driving networks. Um, and I'm going to give you a, a sort of very quick overview of self-driving networks and then talk about some of the network uh, automation uh, applications that, you, that we have that can take you beyond uh, just automating the network uh, and explain what that means. Um, the analogy that I like to use is um, of um, cars. So we have a lot of automation in cars today, um, but when cars started 130 years ago, they were very, very difficult to drive, and it was all like completely manual. And so automation is when you take that manual work and make it easier to do. Um, it's almost like you, know, you have automatic transmission or cruise control, and that makes driving easier, but there's still a human driving. And the goal of self-driving networks is that you actually don't need a human driving. Don't throw things at me. <laughs> um, but the, it's, it's really about um, using more and more uh, machine-driven things. And so um, one of the things that's happening now, you see a lot of self-driving uh, in the news, self-driving cars, and you see a lot of self-driving cars maybe on the road. Uh, where I live, um, about three kilometers from uh, Google headquarters, Waymo now, uh, there are lots of these uh, Waymo cars, but there are other cars as well that do drive themselves. There's still a human in it, and sometimes there are two, uh, and I don't mean passengers. There's one to take over in case something goes wrong, and there's another one who's watching how the car drives and taking notes to you know, go and tweak the software. So the National Transportation Safety Board, or whatever they're called, um, I think there's a highway in there somewhere, um, has these five levels of self-driving, from completely manual, manually driven cars to completely autonomous cars. Um, and so we've taken the, that uh, sort of idea and transformed it to self-driving networks. Um, and what that basically means is, you can start with a completely manual network here, CLI and um, you know, SNMP maybe, and you, so you figure out what's going on in the network using CLI, you use your uh, knowledge to then quickly type away at a, um, sorry, you, you figure out what's going on with SNMP, and then you type away at the CLI to figure out how to fix it. Um, not a lot of people do that still, but you know, uh, that's always the fallback. And so people are moving on to automated networks where you use NetConf and Yang, uh, RESTConf uh, in some cases. Uh, you start using some automation frameworks. Um, and um, now people talk about OpenConfig, which is this thing that uh, Google started and uh, a lot of people have uh, got onto, and zero touch provisioning. Where we want to go from there is that you get much, much richer telemetry with what we call streaming telemetry or um, uh, fine-grained telemetry. So we have this uh, Juniper telemetry interface that will stream the information to you. So instead of polling, it just comes to you. And if you really get that information, you can get to the point where you, you have a much deeper understanding of what your network is doing. Um, and so you can do things from that, for example, health monitoring. So if you get all the right pieces of information, you can say, is my peering working well? Is my core network working well? And for those who have other uh, aspects in their networks, uh, is my e EVPN working well? Is my BNG working well? Uh, you can go on to capacity planning and, and uh, other things. Um, and then the next step beyond that is you start um, doing this thing called event-driven automation. So you, you have these small closed loops that are um, 
automatically taking action. So when a certain event occurs, you send a, a message to the NOC, but you take the first step and you say, let me do such and such to uh, alleviate or uh, um, just, just you know, do something in the network while the NOC has a chance to respond. Um, and then you go from there to more closed loops um, where the network actually takes over maybe 80% of what's going on um, uh, automatically. And then you get to completely self-driving. Now, the thing about this is, I'm, again, trying to draw this analogy between self-driving cars and self-driving networks. But in a self-driving car, when the car starts taking over more and more of the automation, you actually get to a point where um, you start trusting the car. And uh, maybe the car then comes back to you and says, hey, take over. I'm confused. I don't know where the lanes are anymore because you've got this road work and you know, the lanes have disappeared. And you're dead. <laughs> it has happened, so it isn't actually quite that funny. Uh, but but uh, um, there's a guy watching Harry Potter while his car was driving, autopilot, and yeah, sorry. Um, but the thing is, in a self-driving car, where you have to make life and death decisions, and you're not, I mean, humans think that are really good at context switching, they're not actually. I know I'm not. Um, what was I doing? Um, no. Um, so in the network, if the network takes over 90% or 80% of your mundane jobs and takes in all this information, starts doing things automatically, and hopefully does them mostly accurately, and then once in a while it says, there's something going on here, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is a security breach or it's you know, uh, just a um, flash crowd. Uh, that's fine. I think that's, that's actually good. And so one of the things that I say is we all should be you know, between level three and level four. Uh, ideally, we're at level four. Um, I think a lot of us are actually at level one. Uh, I think from what I'm um, seeing from links, um, you're actually more between level two and level three, which is great. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is how you can get to level three. And that's kind of my... Uh, the main part of this presentation. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about this thing called HealthBot, which I talk about health, health monitoring. HealthBot basically, um, yeah, the buzzword that I'm going to get to is machine learning, but I'm going to start with rules-based um, um, operation. And so HealthBot basically takes the knowledge from the expert community, the knowledge from Knox uh, world over, and from our own... Um, customer support, as well as our engineers, and puts them into these set of rules that we call playbooks, which tells you what you should be monitoring, and if you see certain things, what action you should be taking. And typically, so you're, you're distilling all this knowledge into this uh, um, system, primarily in the form of these play, playbooks. And these playbooks are actually in, um, uh, on GitHub. So you can download a playbook for peering, and then say, wow, this is, this is pretty good, but I operate my peering slightly differently, so I'm going to tweak it. Um, so the idea of HealthBot is it's a rule-based system that allows you to monitor the network um, and then take actions. And so um, we, we like to think of this as an enhanced uh, you know, NOC assistant uh, or an intelligent NOC assistant. Uh, as I said, these playbooks are on uh, GitHub, so you can go there and, and download it and, and say, yeah, this is closest to what I want to do. Or if you come up with something completely new, um, we do have uh, member contributions as well. Uh, I say member, but, but um, yeah, people who, who um, put their playbooks in. But typically, it's, they take the playbooks, make some changes, and put them back. So this is one thing that I want to um, um, see you guys, um, well, give you the information. And um, you, know, you, can, you can get a license to do this, uh, um, an evaluation license, and just play with it. Um, one of the questions that people ask is, is this only for uh, Juniper devices? That's where we started. But we have a few people writing playbooks for other devices as well. And so I think that's a great place to start, uh, get, get a uh, eval license and, and play with it. The other thing I want to talk about uh, really quickly is uh, the Northstar uh, controller, 
which essentially has two jobs. One is as a path computation engine, and the other is a, as a planner. So the path computation engine works in real time, gets topology from your network, and then lays out uh, LSPs across your network. And it could be RSVPT, it could be segment routing, um, but it, it will move traffic around as needed based on uh, what's going on in your network and what your intent is. Um, this has also been uh, used in conjunction with HealthBot. So if there's a link that's actually not, uh, not down and not up, um, it will say, okay, um, HealthBot can say, that link is not healthy, and then Northstar can say, okay, move traffic off the link so that you can put it in maintenance and see what's going on. Uh, the planner is nice from the point of view of um, uh, if you want to do exhaustive failure analysis, or if you want to do what if planning, if I want to bring up a new link, or if I want to bring up a new site, uh, what would be going on, what would my traffic do? And so, so we have both aspects to that. Um, I'm not going to go through all this. I put a bunch of material in, in there, sort of, in, in case you have insomnia tonight. But otherwise, you know, um, you can just ignore this. I want to quickly talk about machine learning. Like I said, HealthPod is primarily rules-driven. But um, you have um, applications where you can bring in a little bit of machine learning. So it's not the fundamental operations, mode of operations yet. And one quick example I'm going to give you is, um, you often have this notion of a golden config. This is what a configura configuration should like, I, look like ideally. Um, but you want to go from that, which is the imperative approach, to a more intent-based approach saying, this is what configurations look like in my network. Um, but, but I have, uh, I don't know if you can see it, um, out there um, in the red, I have a few places where the config is departing from the normal. And so we're using machine learning and clustering algorithms to say, this is the normal, this is the common, common case. And there might be a few. There might be a cluster that says, this is how my edge looks, this is how my core looks, but I have these few cases that are different. And so that gives you an idea of um, maybe they're different for a reason, or maybe I need to look into them and see why they're different. So again, this is just application of machine learning. This is typically anomaly detection, and you can do it for, for configs, you can do it for traffic, saying this is normal traffic, but now I don't have normal traffic, so I should be doing something. Um, I'm just going to throw the slide out there in case you want to uh, come back to this and learn more about what uh, we're doing. Um, we have lots of um, lab resources that you can use. As I said, we have um, um, uh, POC licenses or eval licenses for HealthBot. We may have for Nostra as well, so you can play with those. Um, so I, I like to think, and um, again, as Richard said this morning, maybe we're not completely fooling ourselves when we say that we, we, you know, we try to be very open. We have a comprehensive automation suite, and people are using that. But now we're trying to go beyond that. So I'm already over time. That was pretty interesting. But questions? I don't know. Do we have time for questions? Yeah. Clear as mud. OK, thank All right, you. Thank you. Thank you.